Welcome to Grow Overload. I'm Anthony. I finally got around to testing the Ubiquities Unify U6 LR. First thing I want to talk about with the Unify 6 LR is that they updated the packaging a little bit since I installed these for my parents. They now have the device that sits, you know, the round side down in the box. There's a nice little padding there. It comes with a little plastic shield. And then on top of that, it, they also included a piece of paper with a level on it. So if you're mounting it to a ceiling, I'm guessing, or against the wall when you put the um, screws and you tap them in, you will then have that balanced. So, And then on the other side, if you're wondering where the hardware is, it's on the front, so it just fits in together. Well, everything just fell in the box, but it fits in together, and that's how it goes. So overall, I just a quick little rundown of what I think about this product before I dive into some numbers and then dive into what I really think about it. I'm impressed um, compared to the HD Nanos. It's, it's helped out. It solved the part of a problem that I had. Not all of it, but I, I was looking for a little bit longer range to cover more of my yard. The front yard's now covered, and, well, I get a, about 100 and some feet in the backyard. So that's quite impressive overall. Um, there but let's dive into some numbers of how I tested this now this is the first time I've tested an access point here on this channel and if you guys want some other numbers uh, ran on it or anything else I can try it out I did test for my desktop so that I unplugged the Ethernet and tested wirelessly I bought a Wi-Fi 6e so it's the Intel AX210 chip that I basically installed into my uh, current PCI card that I had and then I ran the test from there. This was all with the firmware, so both routers being the um, 5.43.24.12539. So that was on both the Nano HD and the um, uh, the U6LR. Now, in doing so, I did it at two distances, one at seven feet, which is where the normal uh, Nano HD is compared to my desktop, which is seven feet away. And then I did it at 25 feet. And I did test it as well on my OnePlus 6T, which doesn't have AX, but it was just to see if there was an improvement with the current AC technology that is in these older models as well. And how I have these set up, because I'm sure somebody's going to ask me that um, with the wireless access points, they're set up identically the same um, with the settings there as I look through it here the radios you know it's uh, it's 2.4 which I didn't test on which is 40 H you know the channel width is 40 uh, it auto selects the channel but for this test I set the channels so that they were the same and then for the 5 gigahertz which I did test on it was um, channel width of 80 it was on high transmit power Meshing was disabled. I enabled RSSI and that was set to um, minus 80 in there. Band steering was enabled to prefer 5G. I don't see a difference if it's on, off, or balanced. I've just, I, I don't know, maybe somebody can guide me in what the best setting is for there. I'm not taking these settings for gospel. I am more than willing to look at some other options there for settings. And you guys probably in the community have way better knowledge of that. Of why I should be doing that, I'm willing to try it out um, as well. So that was what I have set up for these, and I think that's it for all the settings. And I, ha by the way, I have been updating these since then, and still trying it out, testing out these new firmwares, these beta firmwares, and they have been improving some of the stability stuff, where um, where all the three nan with or I have two nanos and the um, LRs in the garage. So I'll get to see how well it does in super cold, which it should be below zero here this weekend. Yay. Um, but that, that should see how it goes. I think it goes down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit anyways, if I recall um, correctly here. I guess I could look at the sheet. They have a data sheet someplace, right? Product specifications. Uh, operating temperature is negative 30 to 60 degrees Celsius or negative 22 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yep. It should be fine in the garage. The garage isn't heated, but one day it will be um, here. But the biggest thing was is this is a 4x4. 
if you're curious and it's supposed to have on the 5 gigahertz 2400 megabits per second throughput here on the 5 gigahertz band and that's what I really focused on in all this and this was all verified in the app making sure it's connecting um, and all that stuff so at um, 7 feet for the Nano HD versus the LR here the connection speed for the desktop was 867 megabits per second versus 1 gigabit per second and I'll put these all I'll put this table so you can view it here as well and the internet speed is right around the same they were about 4 14 410 that is just what I get I get variance there it varies all the way up to 475 all the way down to 400 it's charter um, yeah, that's what I have and they don't do a very good job so for the next test what I did is on my Plex server my server here local that's plugged in I did a robo copy over the network both receiving and sending so each I did a gig file and a 10 gig file I was trying out a 100 gig file when it was doing the replicating the same data as the 10 gig I said I'm not gonna wait for 100 gigs to transfer over and over and over again and so what I did there was as you can see here when we receive the file it's um, about a hundred megabits per second difference and then when you send the file it is you know a hundred and twenty megabits difference between the LR and the Nano so that was a big improvement bigger than what I was anticipating um, you know I anticipate you know wireless not you know basically keeping up with what it says and it did quite a good job now, one thing I did notice on here is that the wireless, and maybe this is something they're going to fix in firmware, is over time it's going along, and when you do wire transfer, it's solid. It doesn't dip at all, and in wireless, it'll dip down, dip down. So these are the, this is the average over the multiple runs, and then it is, I did three runs on each of these, so it's each way. So a total of six, you know, three receive, three send, and... I did I will put in here too on this the gigabit um, if it's plugged in so if it's plugged in it's basically solid the entire time you can kind of see what my plugged in network is going through it's going to have two NVMe SSDs on both sides for the desktop here and the 10 gig file as well you can see you know it was a little bit slower than the 1 gig file a little bit longer transfer but it is still higher than um, the nano which great and I, I like that enjoyed it right a little bit quicker on the network that was good so then when I hop over to iperf now I ran iperf and here's the command I'm blocking out my machine name but uh, I was doing it too and then the two commands I did now you'll see the difference here it's still about a hundred megs better at seven feet which is the distance I was going to so seven feet is just where it was in the ceiling that I have it set up and I was able to quick switch them out and then once I went to 25 feet ran a longer cable to so it's the same plug and port but it was across the room and you can see there it on the nano it dropped the connection speed just you know when you go into your properties on Windows you can see the connection speed dropped and um, but for the LR it stayed the same you're still getting the same you know throughput on internet speed here then you have when your your one gig file receive you're getting a bigger difference about 300 megabits per second and the, of your just one gig file and then when you're sending it it's also about 300 megabits per second now when you jump over to your 10 gig file you're also seeing that as well so there's a lot more consistency in sending the file it seems like on the nano you're getting a lot more you know it's slower but it's you know you're still getting dips down there and on a 10 gig file that's a that's a pretty big difference right um, here so then when you jump over to iperf stats that I had there again um, if for the iperf exe you know going to my computer that was roughly uh, 100 megabytes difference and then when you do it with this um, dash t20 with a w of 40 that was like f almost th almost four well 350 difference right three 330 around there so that was impressive overall and you can see how they compare it to just having it plugged in 
which is what the computer is normally. Basically, I got the wireless card to test this out, and it worked out quite well. Then it, when I jump over the OnePlus 6T, which did, you know, it's not the greatest wireless conductivity out there. Um, it works for what I need it for. It did pretty good at 7 feet. Um, you can see between the, na the Nano and LR, the connection speed is about, you know, 585 versus 866. So basically was staying at 866 against the LR in both tests. The internet speed here, you'll see um, it was... It's it, when you do it on the nano, it is less than 400 all the time. Um, once in a while, it'll go to 380 if you're lucky and you're standing right next to it. And you're it's like the wind has to be a special way, and you have to jump up and down, turn around, and then it works perfect. But overall, it's you know, if you're right next to it with you know the seven feet here, it's 360 repeatable, and then um, the, the once you jumped up to LR. It was going at full speed, which my internet is only 400 by, uh, whatever, 20 for a charter. Then I also ran the iPerf, and this was through the, if you go to the iPerf website, they have, what is it, Magic something that you can download to be able to test this out. And that's what I did there. And so it's uh, um, 290 megabits per second versus 285, so it's a lot closer in that iperf than it was on the desktop with that new um, AX card and then when you did the iperf on the um, with the more longer command that I did here with the dash T20 dash W40 then you had 200 megabits per second difference as well so then when you jump to 25 feet away there the you know the connection speed at on the nano went down a little bit it stayed the same for the um, Nano HD from the seven foot one, the speed again was for the internet was, you know, margin of error from the seven foot, but it was you know 351, which is below my internet speed here wirelessly, but then for the LR, it was still maxing out what it could do. So then iperf there was identical on the um, at 25 feet, and then it was slight. It was what. 80 megabits per second faster on uh, my second iperf test. So that's that's all I've done for the numbers here. If there's another number you want me to run or try out, I'm more than willing to try it out. Now, granted, it's in the garage and my desktop is not going to the garage, so I have to, you know, do work around some things and move it when no one's using the, the network. But I can certainly go through and do that and try it against the Nano here as well. Um, and let you know how it works but the biggest thing that really helped me out was the distance so now I can I can't quite make it to my fire pit which is roughly a hundred and fifty hundred sixty uh, no probably 175 feet away from the garage um, I can get about 125 feet <laughs> in the garage from the backyard so I still got to figure out that way I got a I got a very long property so um, I'd like to be able to cover most of it because when I'm out mowing or, you know, we're out by the fire pit or something, it'd be nice not to be always on singular and just have wireless instead. But the big thing is I also get all my front yard now, which was a huge improvement where, you know, your phone would be switching on and jumping on and off LTE wireless, LTE wireless, where now it doesn't have to do that when I'm mowing lawn, snow, you know, clearing right now as it is the season to snow clear. Um, we're supposed to be getting another five inches here tomorrow, but um, yeah, this this is a this is an improvement. Um, I know that I've been asking my parents about this because they have two of them, and what was great is I've been able to update them, you know, as they need to be updated on firmwares after I tested them out, and they haven't had any issues. And what the great thing is is I have to ask them, hey, how's the network going? Right, the um, before, if they have a problem, guess what? They're calling me. And so, um, my brother's been up there a couple times too, and it just seems to have coverage, and it just seems to work. Whereas, the old setup I have did not there. And which which is an improvement, right? Newer technology has came out. They basically got a you know ubiquity instead of a Netgear setup now. So that was a huge bonus overall. For me, you know, it, it just, 
it working is a good thing. Now, hopefully it stays that way and nothing gets broken down the road. But that's what these numbers are. Hopefully these numbers help you out. Put in the comments below if you have any questions about those numbers or you want me to test something else out. I'll be more than willing to help um, you guys out. Hopefully make a good decision about your next network upgrade or decide you know which way you want to go. So oh, that's what I really want to do is be with all this data is really help you guys out. Um, I know one thing looking at it, I'm willing to try stuff out. But I really would like the numbers of kind of, you know, okay, let's compare the two, see how they operate. Because it, it, it does help out with making decisions. And I'm just glad that it kind of paid off here with getting uh, this um, LR, U6LR, for my house. Because it solved the pain point I was having. And hopefully, maybe they'll come up with an outdoor one that I can point that works a lot better for the rest of my property. So, with that... Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support Graver Load and helping this channel grow. I really appreciate it. Until next time, God bless. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.